This is session 14 of the Sheltered Instruction PSYOP training. In this session, we're going to learn about and discuss the eighth component of PSYOP, review and assessment. We're going to watch a video on the first part of review and assessment, and we'll talk about assessment and teacher evaluation. In this session, we will discuss the component review and assessment of the PSYOP model. There are eight PSYOP components. Our focus in this session are the four features in review and assessment. Those four features are number 27, comprehensive review of key vocabulary, 28, comprehensive review of key concepts, 29, regular feedback provided to students on their output, and 30, assessment of student comprehension and learning of all lesson objectives throughout the lesson. Our objectives for today, our content objectives are to identify techniques for reviewing key vocabulary and key content concepts, to identify ways to provide directed and constructive feedback on a regular basis, and to distinguish ways to assess student learning. Our language objectives are to find ways to effectively review key vocabulary and concepts, to listen for effective academic oral and written feedback for ELs during a lesson, and to compare and contrast different types of assessments. So let's begin with a comprehensive review of key vocabulary. Remember, research findings clearly state that isolated word lists and dictionary definitions alone do not promote vocabulary and language development. There is a time and place for isolated word lists and dictionary definitions, but the key phrase here is alone. Students do not learn vocabulary words when teachers just only orally introduce and define them. We can help develop academic language and key vocabulary by teaching and then reviewing terminology and concepts through analogy the process of relating new words to other words with the same structure or pattern. For instance, the prefix photo means light, so photography and photosynthesis, so using those word parts to help them make connections to new words. Multiple exposures to new terminology also builds familiarity, confidence, and English proficiency. Words and concepts may be reviewed through paraphrasing, such as let me reiterate or say it again. So here are some ways to review key vocabulary. Individual word study books. This first one is a kindergarten first grade template where the students write a description and draw a picture. For the younger kids, they just do their best to write a description. They may even copy the teacher's description or do their best to copy it. The second template is a second grade one where the kids again write a description, draw a picture, and then give an example of it. This last one can be used for upper grades. Helping students review words in non-print ways is also beneficial. TPR, or total physical response, where the students get up and get moving. You could do charades, Pictionary, using a fly swatter game where they fly swat the word that you want them to find. A Jeopardy game on your smart board. I have who has card game, or playing a game of password. Using interaction activities is a great way to have review key vocabulary words, to have a review of key vocabulary words while you're also having fun. Key concepts are important to review. It's important to link the review to the content objectives so that you and the children stay focused on the essential content concepts. Students' responses to review should guide your decisions about what to do next such as a summative evaluation, or if needed, additional reteaching and assessing. It is essential that ELs have key content concepts reviewed during and at the end of a lesson. Understandings are scaffolded when you stop and briefly summarize, along with students' help, the key content covered to that point. You could use outcome sentences. The outcome sentence strategy is an excellent way to show the student's grasp 
of learning and to give the student time to reflect about what he or she has learned. The teacher provides several sentence starters, such as, I wonder, I discovered, I still want to know, I learned, I still don't understand, I want to know more about, I will ask a friend about, this lesson makes me think of. These are great sentence starters for the students to reflect on their own learning and provide an exit slip for you. Which brings us to feedback. Periodic review of language, vocabulary, and content enables teachers to provide specific academic feedback to children that clarifies and corrects misconceptions and misunderstandings. Feedback also helps students' proficiency in English when it is supportive and validating. Specific feedback is generally given orally or in writing, but teachers can also provide it through facial expressions and body language. And students can also provide feedback for each other. So what is feedback? It's a periodic review of language, vocabulary, and content. It's academic, not behavioral. It's used to clarify and correct misunderstandings. It's specific and constructive. It helps the student build on their learning and progress. You should be modeling correct English while giving feedback. For instance, if the student says, I done good, you can repeat it back by saying, yes, you did a good job. It can be done orally or in writing. And it can be done and should be encouraged to be done between the students. And that might require some modeling and training of the students. And it can be shown through your body language as well. Regular feedback can be provided through those probes, prompts, and cues that we talked about in earlier sessions. Probes uncover the depth of the student's learning. They target why, how, or support, justify, give examples by probing the student to give you a view of their deeper thinking, such as tell me more or what are your reasons for that. Prompts invite students to use what has been previously taught and what has been experienced to resolve problems. Maybe they're not quite on the right track, so asking them a prompt such as, what do you remember about the topic? Or, so let's think about the topic. And having them pull out old graphic organizers or notes to guide them along the correct thinking. And finally, cues. Cues shift the student's attention back to the key details and information to get them back where they need to be thinking. They could be visual, such as highlighting something in the text for them, a movement, such as a gesture by you pointing to something or a diagram or illustration in the, in the text. It could be verbal, your intonation, where you raise your voice or lower your voice or stress a certain word. And finally, environmental, such as pointing to a wall resource, an example, or a word wall. Scaffolding these probes, prompts, and cues must be planned in order to provide the constructive feedback and support. They can function as a tool and extend the student's range of thinking. It also allows the student to accomplish the task and aids or scaffolds the learner when needed. So let's look at this visual again. You start by posing a question and the student responds. Is the answer appropriate? If yes, you can probe here to elicit deeper thinking. Is that answer appropriate? If yes, then you know they've got it. Provide that feedback and move on to a new question. If not, then you can move to one of the planned prompts to activate some background or prior knowledge from previous learning. If the answer is appropriate, you can move on to a new question if it is not, then use one of the cues that you plan for to shift the student's thinking. If they finally get there, then you can move on to a new question. If not, you know you need to offer a direct explanation or a reteaching and modeling of your thinking. And then pose the original question again to make sure they fully understand. Then you can move on to a new question. So let's talk about assessment. 
Assessment occurs throughout the lesson, as evidenced in lesson plans and in periodic review to determine if students are understanding and applying content concepts. Assessment must be linked to the instruction, and it needs to target the lesson objectives. Assessment is informal, authentic, multidimensional, and includes multiple indicators that reflect students' ongoing learning. Multidimensional can be shown in different ways to determine if the students to determine the student's performance, such as a video audio tape or creative work a discussion, oral group responses, and observations. Multiple indicators provide specific student demonstrations as directly related to the content and language objectives. Toward the end of the lesson, students' progress, progress is assessed to see whether it is appropriate to move on or whether it is necessary to review and reteach. So it should be periodic and ongoing, and it could be individual or group administered. Effective sheltered instruction involves reviewing important concepts, providing constructive feedback through clarification, and making instructional decisions based on a student response. This teach, assess, review, and reteach process is cyclical and recursive. First, let's discuss what is assessment and what is evaluation. Assessment is the gathering and synthesizing of information concerning student learning. Evaluation is defined as making judgments about student learning. This cannot be done without doing assessment first. As a visual learner, I really like this visual coupled with the component of assessment. Because if you imagine a chef in a kitchen, or maybe even you in your own kitchen as you are preparing a meal, throughout your preparation, you occasionally take a taste test to find out if you need to add more salt or maybe more of some other spice. As you are taste testing, you are assessing its quality and making adjustments accordingly to make sure it tastes good when you finally set it out on the table to be evaluated by your family members. Once it is out on the table, there are no more adjustments that can be really made. They will then make a judgment about whether or not it tastes good. So, assessment is the gathering and synthesizing of the information concerning students' learning. We then adjust our instructional plan to align with their needs. An evaluation is making judgments about the student's learning and assigning a grade. There are two types of assessment, formative and summative. The goal of formative assessment is to gather feedback that can be used by the instructor and the students to guide improvements in the ongoing teaching and learning context. These are the low stakes assessments for students and instructors. For example, asking students to submit one or two sentences identifying the main point of a lecture, or having students submit an outline for a paper, or those early course evaluations. The goal of summative assessment is to measure the level of success or proficiency that has been obtained at the end of an instructional unit by comparing it against some standard or benchmark. For example, assigning a grade to a final exam, a report card grade, acuity in M-Class, I-STEP, I-READ, or ECAs, SAT or ACT. The outcome of a summative assessment can be used formatively, however, when students or faculty take the results and use them to guide their efforts and activities in subsequent courses or units. Let's talk a little bit about component 3D, using assessment and instruction. This is using the Danielson framework. In order to be proficient, it says assessment is regularly used in instruction through monitoring of progress of learning by teacher and our student. 
resulting in accurate, specific feedback that advances learning. Students are aware of the assessment criteria. Questions, prompts, assessments are used to diagnose evidence of learning. An adjustment to instruction is made to address student misunderstandings. What this says is that assessment has to be ongoing. It has to be specific to student needs and assessment results must be used to drive instruction. To be distinguished in this component, it says that students self-assess and monitor their progress. A variety of feedback from both the teacher and peers is accurate, specific, and advances learning. Students are aware and may contribute to the assessment criteria. This is the end of session 14. Thank you.